Hi guys, welcome to the video. Hope you're doing well. Well, as you can see from the thumbnail, this video is going to be about how we can use Fusion 360 to generate some G-code for a four axis foam cutter. So guys, as you may be aware, there isn't a great deal of software around for foam cutting. Um, it is starting to get better, but when you come on to do anything other than wings, the, the choices are quite limiting. So you've got DevFuzz Foam 2, which you may have seen some of my video series on, and that's an amazing piece of software, but it's not free software, and it's quite um, a steep learning curve as well, but it is really good. So during the last UK lockdown, I decided to have a look at see whether I could do anything with Fusion 360 to generate some G-code for foam cutting. Now, it'll only work for parallel cuts, so that'll mean whatever path the X and Y axis follows, the U and Z axis will follow as well. So that will still be quite useful for some jobs if you want something that's fairly straight. Now you may have seen on the channel, I've got a, a flight test bushwhacker. Um, I'll put some video up of it as well. Uh, I've had it a few years and my son bought it for me for a Christmas present um, you know, a few years ago. And uh, it, it flies really well, but its last flight, how was it last? Uh, it's, I've flown it to you know, a, a lot and you know, it, it, it hasn't survived that well. So its last flight, it was just too far gone to do anything more with. So I've decided to see whether I could build a simple fuselage for it using Fusion 360 to generate the G-code. And because it's a fairly sort of slab slide diffuselage, not too complicated, and then we can still do some smoothing afterwards, I thought it might be a good test for this. So what we're going to be doing in this video is see how we can use Fusion 360 to generate some G-code for a four-axis phone cutter. Now to do that, we have to use something called a post processor. And this is based off the post processor for the garble laser cutter. Um, Autodesk, who produced Fusion 360, provide a lot of um, what, what's called um, post processors and you can download and install more. It comes installed with quite a few and uh, you can install more. So what I've done really with it, I've just used it to copy the X and Y axis across to the U and Z. So that, now you can, if you're very clever with a text editor, you could just do this um, once you've got the G code out, you know, you could just get rid of the, all the Z settings that are in there and then just copy the uh, X and Y to the U and Z. But the problem with that is probably prone to fat fingers and, uh, and I have done it and it does work, but you've got to be very careful you don't get things in the wrong place. Now this post processor isn't very intelligent, so you have to think of how the wire is going to work. And so within the, the sketching part of the tutorial, we, we need to add uh, some extra, what's called helper lines actually, to guide this wire to start at the correct place and end at the correct place. So you'll see that as we go into it. If that's got your appetite whetted guy, what we'll do, we'll jump onto the computer and I'll go through each section in a little bit more detail and show you what we're going to be covering. So this is going to be a two part series. On the first part, we'll just do a test cut. And what I've done is I've scaled it down a bit as well, because it, um, it was a little bit too big to fit on the foam cutter as it is. But in the second part, I'm going to do it fuse large in two sections to show you how we can join them together. But we'll, do, we'll keep it simple for this first video. And then as you're watching this video, the, the post processor will be on the website for you to download. And there'll be a section in the video showing you how to install that and you know what to do. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, stick around. We'll jump onto the computer and I'll go through it in a little bit more detail. So guys, before we start this, this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to use Fusion 360. Now, Fusion 360, if you've used it before, is, um, is an enormous program and it, there is a bit of a steep learning curve to it, but it is worth putting the time in to learn it. And there's some good resources on uh, YouTube and that. And so if you're new to Fusion 360, uh, just, just do a search on, on, on how to use it. Um, there's some real good guys out there that you know, really know their stuff on it. I'm no expert on Fusion 360. I can get it to do what I want uh, most of the time. Sometimes it takes me quite a long while to figure things out, but I usually get there in the end. And I do use it probably majority of the time for 3D printing. So if I need something, I'll design it in Fusion 360, then output it and, and then 3D print it. But I do use it as well for 
get dimensions. Uh, so if I'm thinking of building some, I'll get a plan uh, imported into Fusion 360, scale it, and then use that to create some dimensions. So we'll see that in a little bit as well on the, on the next section. So once you've got Fusion 360 in, uh, installed, now Fusion 360 is free for personal use and there are some limitations to it. Um, for hobbyist use, the restrictions aren't any, any problem, but I haven't found any issues yet. So what we're going to cover, we're going to import an image, which is what they call a canvas in Fusion 360. Once we've got it in, we're then going to calibrate it to whatever size we need it to. And then once we've got that image calibrated, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a, a sketch. And once we've created the sketch, then we can drop into the, what's called the manufacturer section. What, once we're in the manufacturer section, that's where we generate a G-code. Now, before we go and generate the G-code, what we'll have to do is import the post processors. Um, well, there's only one post processor and there's also a tool, but when you watch this video, I'll have them up on the website and I'll show you how to do that in, in the video as well. Then once we've done that, we create a setup uh, for the job. Then we create a 2D profile. And then once we create the profile, we can then simulate it in Fusion 360 just to make sure it's going to do what it's going to do. Because th this isn't very intelligent, this. So you have to think of how the wire is going to travel through the, uh, the foam. So if you just end it in some part of the foam and expect it to return to home, it's not. You've got to think of how the wire is going to travel. But as you'll see, it works quite well. What we do then, we'll then post out the G-code. And then what we'll do is we'll load it into dev CNC foam and make sure it runs OK because the simulation in that is really good. And then once we've done that, what I'm going to do is just run a, a test cut uh, for this video. And then in, in the next video, what we'll do, we'll actually go in and make the actual fuselage. But this will be a test cut of the fuselage so we can see if it's going to do what we want. Because I think otherwise the video would be just miles too long. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get an image. And I scoured the internet and I found this real good image of a, an L4 grasshopper. So I'll just switch you over so you can see it. So there we go there. And this is very similar to the flight test uh, bushwhacker um, and it should be lend itself quite readily to doing a, a fuselage with with this post processor because as you can see it's it's not very complicated and we should be able to do this reasonably well now the only thing is I'm, I'm gonna have to do it in two parts because the, the size I'm wanting um, is a bit longer than the foam cutter uh, and I've got some extended threaded rods for the foam cutter which I could put in so what we'll do we'll go into Fusion 360 I've already got Fusion 360 running. Um, and one thing I did uh, forget to say that Fusion 360 will um, work on Mac and Windows. So if you prefer to use a Mac, you can, you can do all this with a Mac as well. Right, so in the data panel, if you just have a look at the data panel there, you can see all these different uh, documents I've got. You see some of them I've got as editable, some as read only. And all you need to do is just switch them over. Now this is this is the one I've done here already for the L4. And we'll just close the data panel. And just uh, look at the top. And th there we go there. So all we need to do is import an image, calibrate it. And once we calibrate it, then we can create a sketch from that. So I'll show you that on a new document. So we'll just go to a, a new document. So as regards calibrating, you need to work out what sort of size you're gonna be working with. So we just hit the plus there. And best thing to do, one of the recommendations from um, Fusion 360, see at the moment we're untiled. If we just save this, it ca captures the design history as well which is quite handy, so you can go back um, if you, something's not quite right. So what we'll do is we'll do a save. And I'm just gonna call this. So what happens now, anything we do, you'll see down in the bottom here, the history will start to go. So as I said, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about using Fusion 360, because there's, there's much better video tutorials on there, but we're just gonna do, cover the basics of what we need to do for this. So what we need to do is we have a look at insert. 
and then in Fusion 360 it calls images canvas so what we do is we select canvas and then you've got this one there at the bottom insert from my computer so I go for that now I've just stored this this isn't my usual computer I use here this is a uh, this is slightly newer but a bit less powerful right so we're going to pictures and then we've got the grass uh, hopper there the old four so if we open that up and then if you see at the side there it's got the name of the file and it's asking us where we want to put it now I usually put everything on this top face which is this one here seems to work a little bit better doing it that way so I think that's where I put the other one anyway we'll check that in a bit so we say there and then what it's doing there is giving us a preview now what you can do is to make it a bit bigger a bit easier to see and you can rotate it so we'll just bring it a bit bigger now at the moment it doesn't matter on the scale because we're going to scale it in a bit so so all we do is we say yes to that and if we turn it to top and then we can zo zoom in and out so what we need to do now is we need to uh, cal calibrate the image now the way to do that first of all you need to decide how how big the uh, the model is going to be i usually go by wingspan or fuselage length so i think i worked out on this one i wanted a, a fuselage length of seven 780 millimeters so what we do We highlight the image and then we go calibrate so if we do calibrate now and what we do we pick two point point on the front there let's just zoom in a bit so we can see it around about there so around about there and then we'll go try and get it as horizontal as possible around about that's it so at the moment that's saying 71 millimeters which is <laughs> tiny so i think i did this to 780 but you know whatever scale you're going to do it to so 780 and you can see that's now gone really big now and so now that image is calibrated to the size we want so now that we've done that what we need to do then is go on to uh, and create a sketch so what we'll do we'll go in the next section we'll look about creating a sketch so guys it's been a few days since I filmed the last section and off screen what I've done I think to make things a little bit better I've rescaled the image to fit on the foam cutter rather than doing it in two sections because I think it would just make the make this process seem a little bit complicated and it's something you can perhaps try later once you've got the hang of it so what I've done is I'll switch you over so the image now originally I had it scaled around about 770 millimeters I've scaled it down to to 500 um, using exactly the same process as we did before so we just go onto the image right click and go calibrate and then so I rescaled that to 500 now if you have a look at the bottom here you can see the history I was talking about earlier so I've stepped back to where we imported the image so what we need to do now now we've got the image scaled correctly we need to create a sketch from from the image so if I just go forward and now we've got our sketch and if I just take the image off you can see this you can see the sketch so so that's the sketch we've got and I'll just go into it to explain put the image back on and then you can get to edit the sketch two ways you can either just go on the on the sketch yourself and go edit or you can actually go down on the timeline here and go edit sketch so that puts us into the sketch there and to create this sketch it's quite easy and you, I'd highly recommend you follow some of the tutorials on Fusion 360 but sketching is probably one of the fundamental parts of Fusion 360 normally most things are started with a sketch so 
basically all I've done is I've created some straight lines with this option here. So I've created a straight line from there and then going up, up to there. And then some more straight lines here. So this is going to be where the elevator is going to go. Another straight line there. Now this, this part here, let me just turn the sketch off a minute and you better see it better. You can see we've got some handles here. This is a spline. And what we can do with splines, we can alter the curvature. And as you can see, that follows the curvature quite, quite well of the cup. Now, if I just manipulate it, you can see how that, that goes. Uh, control Z, there we go. And then all I've done is I've created an, another straight line here. And this again is another spline. So you can see the little green handles there where we can manipulate it. We've got a straight line here, another straight line there, and then this is a spline as well. Now if you have a if you notice there, that symbol there is is for tangency. So what you want to do is to make sure when whenever you're joining onto a um, a curved section that you go up to this option here. So what you would do, you would go on to select the straight line select the curve and then you go on to tangent and what that does it makes sure the transition from the straight line to the curve is smooth because otherwise what will happen is in the g-code you'll get like a, a bump there as it goes into it if you notice there we haven't used a tangent there but i think that's all right for there because that 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 looks that looks okay there but where you want it to flow you need to make sure it's tangent so that, that's all we need for the sketch. So if we just turn the cameras off so we can see the sketch. So if you, if you notice here, if I just click in the middle, that turns blue. That means that everything's connected. Now, the other thing they like you to do in Fusion 360 as well is where we've got blue lines, they like you to turn them black. And what that does really, it means that all the lines are fully constrained. But for, for, the, for this, what we're doing here, I don't think it's that important because, you know, we, we, we're just trying to get some g-code out for foam so it's not like it's going to go into a, a cnc milling machine or anything where it's down to a thousandth of an inch accuracy so you can put dimensions on that that will try and um, make it all black but it's no need there now the other thing you'll notice here if you have a look at the front there i've put a straight line there now this is what i've said about this post processor it's not very intelligent so you have to think of how the wire is going to work so the reason for that is that's going to be the entry point and the exit point of the wire. So what's going to happen when the wire comes along, it's going to start there. And when we go into the um, create the geometry, you'll see, see that on the um, manufacturing section. So it will come in there and then it will go around and do that. And then it will come, come back to there. That's why that part's down. Now, if we didn't have that there, what, what would happen is the wire would be down here at, say, zero, zero somewhere and it will just come straight up. And if you haven't got it starting on the furthest point out, it could then cut into the foam. So that little line there is just to help it start. And, and that, that's really what we need. Now, you, you can, if we come out of the sketch, you can I'll put it on its side. What we can do, we can, although you don't have to do this, what I found is that if you're gonna make multiple parts, now. This is only going to be one part, so it's going to be quite quite easy. But So when I actually make the bigger version, I'm going to do it in two parts. And doing it in two parts, what it's best to do is to extrude this. So if we just right click, and it won't hurt on this, and we're going to extrude it, and we can see a line come up there. Now, it doesn't really matter how far we extrude it. Um, all I'm going to do is a millimetre, because it doesn't have any bearing on the... Um, the actual cut itself but it helps when we've got multiple parts because we can tell it which part we want to cut so if I just do one millimeter there and say okay there we go you can see now we've, we've got the body there and what it does it switches the sketch off so if you think where's my sketch gone just and your sketch is still there that's how we create our sketch and as I've said if, if you're struggling to on the sketching side have a look at some tutorials um, that show you how to do it. Uh, it. It would just take too long if I went to show you every aspect of creating the sketch. And there's some better tutorials on uh, YouTube than I can probably do on 
the, the other fundamentals of Fusion 360. Right, so what we'll do now is once now we've got the sketch done, we'll drop into the manufacture section and show you how we get the G code out. So in this next section, guys, we'll go into the manufacturing section, and this is where the, something called a post processor is used to generate the G code. Now, if you're not familiar what a post processor is, so Fusion 360 generates the ge geometry, but in theory, all G code should be the same, but it's like most things in life, there's always slightly different uh, versions. And so what you'll find is that on some CNC machines, not every G code is implemented, and there's a lot of uh, M codes as well that are used. You might have seen a lot of them in 3D printing. And those M codes can be very machine um, dependent. Basically what the job of the post processor is to do is to take that geometry from Fusion 360 and generate the G code for your machine. That, that's probably an oversimplification, but I think it sort of gives you the idea uh, of what it is. What we'll do first of all in this section, um, the post processor I've created will install that. And I've also created um, a, a tool to go in there. Now the tool is actually the hot wire. My main look a little bit different to yours because I've already got this set up. But basically what we do, we, if we go to the drop down, we go into the manufacturer section. And then I think what we're going to do, we're going to switch the canvas off because it, we don't need the canvas now, we only need the drawing. So to do that, if we just go to models. And then we've got canvas there. If we just switch the canvas off and then we'll turn it into that sort of view there. What we need to do first of all, if we go into manage, we need to install the uh, post processor in the, in the post library. So what we need to do now is import these uh, two files. Now, by the time you see the video, these will be up on the website so you can download them from there. So if we go to, so what we want to do is select local, then go to import. And then I've just put in the download sections here. I've got Fusion 360 there. And then this is the Hotwire post processor. Uh, basically all these are is the Java script. So if we open that up, there we are. So we've got GRB phone cutter, uh, RC keys. And then it just got a few other things in there. So we'll just close that. Then the other thing we need to get, if we go back into manage, we go into tool library. Go to import, downloads, Fusion 360. Oh, there we go. Hotwire tools library. Just like that open and there we go now if you have a look on this tool here what we can do we can go into that and basically what I've done with this really is set it set it to what the curve value is I normally run a curve value around about two millimeters but when you're running it like this you set half the value so so we've got curve width there, and this is based on a, uh, a laser cutter. So you can see we've got type here, laser cutter. So when it says that, just ignore them, it, it works okay. And most of the other data there, you don't have to worry about. I've put the feed rate in there. That's the feed rate I generally run at. And there's nothing much else to do in there. So if you just import them, and we close, so now we've got the post processor imported, what we can do now is we can go on to actually create some profiles. So what we'll do is we'll do that in the next section. So now we've got our sketch created, we're in the manufacturer section. Um, now hopefully on the previous section you've installed the post processor and the hot wire tool. So what we're going to do now is actually how we're going to create the G code and uh, test it. So. I'll just swap you over to the other screen. There we are. So here we are in our design. Now, what you probably find useful is if you just switch the canvas off, um, 
because it does get in the way a little bit when we're trying to do the um, design it. And you can see I've already got it switched off there. If we've got it on there as well, it, it, it can be a little bit confusing. So, so, so make sure you've got that switched off as well. So what we do then, from the drop down menu, we go to manufacture. And the first thing we need to do, and this is the same with, with, with whatever you do in Fusion 360, you need to create what's called a setup. So we go to the setup there, and all we want is a new setup. And that creates um, this setup page for us. All we need to do now uh, is tell it what we're gonna do. Now, because I've been in this before, it's automatically gone to the operation of cutting. But if we had a different operation, if you found you had milling uh, there, and you see what happens, it changes the whole look at the top as well. So it's cutting that we want. So we go back into all to that. So we'll change that back to cutting. And there we are, we, we're back into the cutting section. Now what it's done, it's just put an outline around the, the sketch as to what it thinks the size of our um, material is going to be. But what we need to do, we need to go in and make a few little changes for the foam cutter. So, so in the edit section, there's, there's a couple of things we need to do. The first one is this one here, box point. We need it to be down at the bottom here. So it doesn't really matter which one you do, as long as it's in this bottom corner. So and make sure you've got model orientation there and stop point on box there as well. There are different options there. But so what we'll do is we'll go to, we'll go to the bottom one if we can pick it up. There we go. So you can, you can now see that the, the X, Y and Z I've moved to this corner. So that's where a cutting is going to be starting from. Now, if we left it there, it would assume the wire's right in the middle, which for a foam cutter it isn't. So what we do now, we go on to stock. And what I like to do here is leave everything as it is, but when it says stock side offset, what it's going to do, it's going to add an offset all the way around. So I like to put 10 to 15 millimeters in there. So if we put 10 in and you what you'll see it expand. And there we go. And what you can do as well is help make things a little bit easier as well. I tend to change this to five. And that stock dimensions there, that's that's gonna be the size of foam we need. Now that the Z height, just ignore that because the post process is gonna change change that anyway so if you look at, if you want to know what size of piece of foam you want so we're going to want a piece of foam that's 485 millimeters by um, 111 millimeters now if you prefer to work in inches you can just change the units up here go after oh i need to come out of that first i'll just come out of that and if you edit there you can change that from millimeters to inches um, so we'll just go back in and edit that. Oh, I'm still in it here. I've got the camera right in the way on the screen. Cancel, there we go. Right, so go to edit. Now the other thing that you might find useful to do as well, um, and the way things generally work on Fusion 360, you generally follow these tabs across it's that it's quite well good the way it's been done because it, it sort of follows on so if we go into the what, last one called post process and here you can have program name now by default it puts this one zero zero one in um, and to me that's a little bit uh, if you're in the cnc milling that might make more sense but i tend to like to put a name there so i'm going to put l4 uh, I'm just going to call it YT for YouTube. And this is, well, when it actually generates the file with the G-code in it, th th that's what it will use. So we've got our setup done now. 
Now the next thing we need to do, and we've only got one option here really, is cutting. And you can see there it looks like a bit of a, a laser cutter as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut in 2D profile. And it, it's lost our stock there, but that, that, that's all right there. And what we're going to do then, we're going to, first thing we need to do is, is select our tool. So we're just going to work along these settings here. So if we're going to select tool. Go local. There we go. So th this is of a type laser cutter because we're basically using a laser cutting um, post processor with some modifications. And what you can do if you want, you can modify this. Now, uh, my uh, foam cutter works with a, a curve setting of around about two millimeters. So what you want is half of that because two millimeters is a full uh, depth of the wire. And if you think about it, the, the path is going to be following this line here. So it's two millimeters all the way across. So what we want is just one millimeter uh, there. So, but if you'll find, if your curve value is a lot different, then you can just go in here and alter the, alter the width. But, but so one millimeter is fine for what we're doing. There we go. So we've got a 120 millimeter feed rate in there. Right, so the next one section is probably the most important section here, and this is the geometry. So this is where we're going to tell Fusion 360 what we're going to cut. Now, I think what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to switch the, the body off because I think it'll make it a bit easier for you to see. We go into models where we extruded it. I'm just going to turn that body off. There we go, I think that makes it a little bit easier to see. And it wants to know what we're gonna cut. Now, if, what's gonna happen, the wire's gonna come from down here, and what we want it to do is to go up to there and come along and do that profile. So what we do is we just select that section there. Now, if you notice, this arrow is pointing back we want to, if we just click on it, it'll switch it around. So that means it, it's going to come in there. And then what we want it to do, we want it to do this next. And this is, again, what I found through doing this, it, it seems to work better if you do things clockwise. I'm not sure why, but things seem to work a bit better that way. Right, then what we need to do then, the Heights tab doesn't have any bearing on anything we're doing, so we can just ignore that. The next tab, the passes tab. Now this is one where if we don't change the setting here, we get an error. And what it is, is this thing here, compensation type. What we have to do is we have to change it to in computer. Now, if you leave it the other way around, it will, when it generates a G code, you'll just get an error. So uh, I'm not full, I don't fully understand what it's doing there, but I know if you don't change your computer, it doesn't work. And then the last section here on the linking tab, what we need to do, we need to switch off lead in and lead out. And then what we need to do is tell it where we're going to start. So at the moment it's got entry position and we've got nothing. So if we just go, because we're highlighted in blue, we just go up to there, just zoom in a bit so we can select the dot. So that's going to, and it's, see it's got point there. So that is a point. Just zoom in there and you see what it's done it's now created the profile for us so what we can do now if there's any problems with any of this you'll get an error there so if you do find you get an error you just need to go back in and see if you can figure out what's what's gone wrong if you're trying to do any inside cuts, that might cause problems as well. I have dabbled with that, but at the moment it only seems to work if you're doing outside. So if you think I might like to put a, a cutout section in here, um, there is a way around it. I might do it in another video, but it, it, it gets a little bit complex. So we'll just leave it as it is for the moment. So what we're going to do now is to check if it works okay. If we go on to 
the setup. If we right click, we can do simulate, or we can get get it from here on actions if we do simulate. And uh, we'll just move that out of the way there. So what's going to happen, the simulate is going to show us how it would actually go. So, and all we have to do, we just press this play button. You can alter the speed as well. So if we just press this play button, you can see it's going to go down. And that looks to be working okay. And it stopped. Now it stops there, but the post processor will actually take it back out and it will bring it back to, um, it won't take it back to zero, zero, but it will take the X and Y um, back to the, sorry, not the X and Y, it will take the X and U back to zero. So it will come out, it won't stop there. You'll see that when we actually look at the uh, Dev Sim CNC simulation. So that, so that looks okay. So what we can do now, we come out to simulate. And what we can do, we can now actually generate the G code. So if we go actions, and this is where we call post process. Now in the post process, uh, we need to select our, our post processor. So, um, find where I'll, where I'll put it out. Uh, use personal post. There we go. And then we've got the GRB or phone cutter post processor. The output folder, this is where it's going to send the data to, so we don't want it to go there. So we'll change it to somewhere else. Uh, that's it. We'll, um, so what we'll do is we'll just put it in downloads for the time being. Select folder. So that's where our output's going to go. This is going to be our program name. Now, there is one other setting in here that we need to change, otherwise it'll cause problems. This one here, it says built in, allow helical moves. We need to change that to no. And you'll see any setting we've changed comes up in blue. So make sure you've got allow helical moves set to no, otherwise you'll get an error as well. So. I think that's all we need to do. So what will happen now, it will generate the G code and then what it will do, it will output it um, and it will show us the output. So if we say, and it, if you look there, it says it'll have an, ex, uh, an extension of NC. So if we go post, and it's just confirming where we want it again. So we'll just say yes. So there, there's my file there. So if we open it up, and there it is there. Uh, and as you can see, I'll put a little comment here. Now guys, I, you need to run this through the simulator on Fusion 360 and DevCNC because as I've said, this isn't very intelligent, so it might do something unexpected. But for this, it seems to work okay. So if you have a look, it's generated all the G code and we've got the X, Y, U and uh, Z axis as we have on the foam cutter. Now, for any reason, if you've got a different type of foam cutter with a different access, uh, it, it wouldn't be too difficult just to go in and change the code. I mean, if you, um, if you need something with a different access letter, just let me know and I'll show you where you can change the letter. It's, it's quite easy to change. There's only a few lines that changes it. So this is the G code. So what we can do now, if we bring up, Dev CNC sim on here. Dev sim CNC. I think I've got it on here. Uh, I hope I've got it on here. <laughs> Dev. There we go. Right, so it's come onto the wrong screen, so I'll just bring it across. Now, what we, need, what we need to do, you can see at the moment, we've got, it's just brought up the default size of the phone block. 
if you remember in Fusion 360 on the setup page, we go into the setup. And there we've got the sizes. So we can use the, them sizes in Dev, uh, Dev Sim CNC phone. So we've got a stock width of 485 and a height of 115. So if we go back into, if we go into settings, foam size. So size along the um, X axis foam was 485. Along the Y was 115. Well, we need to change some settings here. These are all out. Uh, my x-axis length I think is 600 uh, that's I think we've got about 330 on there carriage distance that's right yeah I don't think that one really matters there uh, from origin we we'll just say zero zero we we'll just do center and if we go apply yeah, that looks a bit better. Now what I tend to do is take the, this is the size of the machine. So I just take them off. Now if we load our G code up now. So we go into, there we go, into downloads. If we turn it sideways, uh, looks like it doesn't fit on. I think you can just see it does fit on there. On. So what we can do, we can now run the simulation. So speed it up a little bit and we'll bring it in a little bit so you can see it I'll take them off as well makes it a little bit easier to see so hopefully what's going to happen the wire's going to come up here do all this come back and hopefully come back out so let's let's just see what happens so you can see it's running down the G code here There we go. Let's just make it a little bit faster, a little bit slow. So the elevator section, we're coming around there, back, up around to the top. That's it. And that last bit there comes out. On the actual geometry, it stopped there, but within the post processor, it pulls it back out to here. So that looks like it, sh it should work. Uh, now, as I'm actually recording this video, I haven't actually tried it on the phone cutter yet. I've done lots of simulations with it. So when we try it uh, for real, that'll be the genuine first time. So hopefully it's gonna work okay. So all we need to do now, what I suggest you do now is just save. What we'll do guys is we'll, um, we'll go back down into the workshop and run it through and see what happens. Fingers crossed. So hopefully you've got the post processor installed and you've managed to generate some G-code and the, the simulation tests you've run have gone okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna um, set the foam cutter up uh, and we'll run the test cut. So um, I've got most of it set up, so all I need to do is bring up the uh, controller and then we'll home the machine. So we'll so we'll connect. There we go. And we'll switch on the power to the motors. And then we'll home the machine. Doesn't take very long. There we go, so we're all home, the foam on. So this is the piece of foam I'm gonna be using. And it's, uh, I've just got it on this other piece of foam with a, um, some double-sided tape. Because in this part one, we're just running this as a test basically, just to make sure everything's gonna work okay. 
So we'll get this positioned. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring it up uh, 10 on each um, axis. So in the jogging distance, set that to 10. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this button here, which will do both at the same time, up. And then I'm just going to bring the, I think the wire might actually be okay there. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think we'll leave. So all we need to do now is zero everything. So we're now, so we're now ready to set the foam cutter going. So we'll load the code in. Uh, it's in L4. And it's this test. And there you, are, you can see on the side there that uh, it's going to cut it. Now, this isn't my normal foam I use. And I, possibly it, the, the, the wire might be slightly hot, but um, we'll, we'll see how it goes anyway. So what I'm going to do now is set the temperature. And I've quickly just tested the foam with the uh, wire so that looks okay then so we'll give it a try and genuinely guys this is the first time i've actually tried this so let's run it and see what happens nothing what's up no oh. what we've got there I think there was a pause in there. So we're, we're doing that little 10 millimeter bit at the beginning. Yes, as I suspected, I think the wire's a little bit on the hot side. We've got quite a big curve value there. So what I might do after this, I might run another one with the wire slightly cooler so we can see the difference. Let's just go. There we are, and that last little bit is taking out the foam that was explaining in the video. Right, we'll, uh, we'll switch the wire off and we'll have a look. Right, so we'll switch the wire off. And that's taken 12 minutes to cut. So, uh, let's... Uh, Yeah, so the, the, the main the main problem being, guys, I've had the wire a bit too hot. The, the setting I have works all right for this foam that's underneath. Um, so the setting I ha have works all right for this foam I have underneath. But um, different foams have, you know, different properties. So um, this was just a piece of scrap foam that came in some packaging. I thought it would be good to run this test. So... What, what I'll do off camera, I'll run another test with it a little bit um, not so hot the wire and, and see what we get out of it. But um, I think that's that's proved that you can use Fusion 360. Um, and, and as I um, said, you need to try and think how the wire is going to work. Um, so 
in the next video what we'll actually do we'll actually make the bigger version of this fuselage and i'll probably make it out of two pieces of this um this black foam and it'll um and i'll probably put them together and then what i'm thinking of doing is using the foam cutter to put some taper on the sides just just in the manual mode not with any g code so uh yeah, we'll see that in the next video so i've done the other cut now and i could have probably taken the temperature down even a little bit more but this isn't my normal foam i normally use it was just some test foam um, just to make sure everything's all right I didn't want to waste foam on the just some test cuts the actual real one i'm doing is a lot bigger than this so i'll be doing it in two parts so as you can see it's quite possible to do um, foam cutting with Fusion 360. So it's only for parallel cuts. Uh, if you need to do anything other than parallel cuts, then you'd need to use either uh, dev fuzz foam if you're gonna do uh, fuselages or um, dev wing foam um, for wings or one of the three options. So there's a video I did a while back um, showing you all the different options for uh, G-code generators. So you know, if you're looking for doing wings, uh, you could do parallel wings with this, but um, I think you're better off using some of the wing software for that because there's more options and it probably works a little bit better. This is quite crude if I must say so, but it does work and it will pr prove useful for some cuts. So as you can see, it is possible to use Fusion 360 to generate some G-code for foam cutters. And uh, I don't think Autodesk will ever go into it in any big way because I don't think there's a great deal of money in it for them. So, um, but you never know. So, it may happen one day so in the next video what i'll do is i'll i'll make the fuselage for the uh the real size so this was just a, a scale down version for testing purposes so on that that will be done in two pieces so i'll show you how to do that in two pieces it's a little bit more tr tricky but i didn't want to complicate this video too much by showing you that as well uh, i was going to then i thought it's just gonna make the video too long and it, it might just confuse you so i think the first thing to do is just have a go with this first and understand it and do watch some of the few t tutorials on Fusion 360. I mean, it's a massive program and there's a lot to it, but, and the learning curve is a bit steep, but um, once you get into it, I mean, I, I, I use nothing else now. And uh, it's just, you know, if you, if you spend the time on it, you'll get the results out that you, you need. So I hope that's been useful and interesting to you. Keep a look out for the next video and see you then, guys.